This video introduces the idea of singular value decomposition, a powerful way of rewriting matrices that has important applications to real world problems like image compression and data simplification. Recall that an n by n square matrix A is said to be diagonalizable if there's a diagonal matrix D and an invertible matrix P such that A is equal to P D times P inverse. The diagonal entries of D are given by the eigenvalues of A, and the column vectors of P are given by the corresponding eigenvectors of A. One more fact that I'd like you to recall, that is that if we start with an n by n symmetric matrix, call it S, then we can diagonalize S in such a way that the matrix P is an orthogonal matrix. The singular value decomposition generalizes these ideas to an arbitrary matrix A that need not even be a square matrix. In order to generalize this idea of diagonalization to matrices that aren't even square matrices, we first need to generalize the idea of a diagonal matrix. So up to now, we've only talked about n by n square matrices being diagonal matrices. And we said that a square matrix is a diagonal matrix if all of its non-zero entries lie on the diagonal. So we have some, we might have some non-zero entries here, and then we have zeros everywhere else. So we'll say that an M by N matrix, where M and N might be different, is called a diagonal matrix if all of its non-zero entries lie on its diagonal, where the diagonal entries are the entries whose row number and column number are the same. So for example, here's a four by two diagonal matrix, and here's a three by five diagonal matrix. For an M by N matrix A, the singular value decomposition, abbreviated SVD, of A is a way of writing A as a product of a matrix U, a matrix sigma, and a matrix V transpose, where sigma is an M by N diagonal matrix, V is an N by N orthogonal matrix, and U is an M by M orthogonal matrix. Let me draw these matrices with squares and rectangles to illustrate the dimensions. So here's A, an M by N matrix. Here's U, an M by M square matrix. Sigma is an M by N matrix, just like A. And V transpose is an N by N matrix. And actually V is also N by N. The singular value decomposition has some features similar to the diagonalization of a matrix. Then namely that the middle matrix, sigma, is diagonal and that it's a product of three matrices. In fact, since V is orthogonal, V transpose is the same thing as V inverse. So we could make this look even a little more like a diagonalization by writing this as U times sigma times V inverse. This singular value decomposition has something in common in particular with the diagonalization of a symmetric matrix because like the diagonalization of a symmetric matrix, the two matrices on the outside, U and V, are orthogonal matrices. But the singular value decomposition is different from a diagonalization in that U and V may be different matrices. In fact, if M and N are different numbers, if we have a purely rectangular matrix, not a square matrix, then U and V have to be different matrices because they've got different dimensions. But a singular value decomposition has a lot of the same power as a diagonalization does. It has the power of writing a matrix in terms of a much simpler diagonal matrix. And in fact, it has a lot of the similar inner workings also. 
in that the diagonal entries of sigma come from eigenvalues and the columns of u and v come from eigenvectors, though not exactly quite of the matrix A. We'll see those inner workings in another video that shows how we find matrices u, sigma, and v for a singular value decomposition and why it works. But for now, let's do one example. Let's consider the three by two matrix A given here. And we're given three other matrices, u, which is a three by three matrix, sigma, a three by two diagonal matrix, and v, a two by two matrix. We're asked to verify that u, sigma, and v can be used to construct a singular value decomposition of A. In other words, we want to show that A equals u times sigma times v transpose. To make sure we have a legitimate singular value decomposition, we should also check that u and v are orthogonal matrices. Let's start by checking orthogonality. So for u, if I label the columns u1, u2, u3, we need to check that u1 dot u2 is 0, u1 dot u3 is 0, and u2 dot u3 is 0, so that the columns are, nor are orthogonal. And we also need to check that u1 dot u1 is 1, u2 dot u2 is 1, and u3 dot u3 is 1 to make sure those columns have length 1. I'll do a couple of the harder cases and leave the easier ones for you. So I'll check that u1 dot u3 is 0. So that's going to be this first column dot producted with the third column. So that's going to be this expression. That can be rewritten as follows. And if I pull out the sevens from the square roots and rewrite the middle fraction by multiplying it on the top and the bottom by the square root of 10, I do indeed get 0. I'll also verify that u1 dotted with u1 is equal to 1. So when I take this dot product, here's what I get. So that simplifies to the following, which does indeed add up to 1. I'll leave it to you also to verify that v is an orthogonal matrix. In other words, if these are the columns v1 and v2, I'll leave it to you to check that v1 dot v2 is 0 and the v1 dot v1 and v2 dot v2 are both 1. Finally, we need to check that A is indeed the product of u times sigma times v transpose. Let me write out this product. Notice that the last matrix I wrote down was v transpose, not v, right? I swapped those two entries. And that's exactly what I'm supposed to do. So I'll multiply out these two matrices first. Recall that if I multiply a matrix by a diagonal matrix on the right, then that amounts to just multiplying the uh, columns by the appropriate diagonal entries. And I'll copy down the rightmost matrix, and I'll continue to multiply. After some serious radical simplification, this it turns into 0, 2, 1, 3, negative 2, 0, which is indeed our original matrix A. In this video, we introduced the idea of a singular value decomposition and compared it to diagonalizing a matrix. In future videos, we'll look at how to do a singular value decomposition, in other words, how to find u, sigma, and v, why it works, and what some of the applications are.